It will be open as healthy and safe. I have here the Huawei Mate X5. It's going to be another dramatic phone. So let's do an unboxing and then I'm not going to test this phone too in depth because um, the only thing new about the Mate X5 in terms of hardware internally is the new chip. Otherwise, everything else from the cameras to the screens are exactly the same as the Mate X3, which I already tested and made a video like a few weeks ago. You can check it out if you want. But oh, I do think the battery is a little bit larger. So two new things here, larger battery and the chip. But you know, that chip is huge news because it is self-developed by Huawei and it has the US government kind of all up in arms right now trying to figure out how Huawei was able to make a chip because they're supposed to not be able to. So if you guys um, have seen my Mi X3 video, you know that I was very impressed with the hardware. So I'm pretty sure, you know, I'll be impressed with this hardware too. This is among one of the thinnest and lightest foldable phone around. The Mi X5 is actually like two or three grams heavier than the Mi X3. When it's folded, it's only, it only measures 11.1 .1 millimeters in thickness. So it's definitely one of the thinnest foldable phone around. Okay, so we have a 66 watt charger. The phone supports 66 watt charge and also 50 watt wireless charge and a USB-C cable. And you have here, I'm guessing a case, a protective case. Yep, so you do get a, it's a pretty cheap case this time around. It's like a clear jelly case that snaps onto the back of the phone. But I'm not gonna use it because this phone's back feels pretty nice. So this unit I have comes in this uh, vegan leather back. So it's like fake leather, but I like how it feels. It's quite grippy and it comes in purple. I am not a fan of purple back phones, but hey, some people may like it. So um, in case some of you guys may not know what's happening with the new Huawei chip and why it's so controversial and so, so newsworthy, I'll give you a quick recap. So basically, the US government has put sanctions in place to prevent Huawei from accessing cutting edge silicon making technology. So in the world right now, there are only a few companies, factories that can manufacture cutting edge silicon. We're talking about three nanometer, five nanometer processes. There's um, TSMC, which is based in Taiwan, and Samsung has its own. I think that's about it. I think Samsung and TSMC are the two factories that have the capabilities to make five nanometer chips and three nanometer chips. So all the mobile chips you can think of, whether it's Apple's um, A17, A16 chips, or the Qualcomm Snapdragon chips, they're all made from either TSMC or Samsung Foundry. Two factories in the world make all the cutting edge silicon. And the US government has banned both of those companies from working with Huawei. Now there is a silicon fabrication factory in China called SMIC. According to what everybody believes is that that factory's technology was quite behind TSMC and Samsung. So that factory was only supposed to make 14 nanometer chips. And that's what the US government was trying to do. They're trying to prevent Huawei from making chips that are seven nanometer or five nanometer or three nanometer. But then somehow Huawei managed to do it. The Kirin 9000S that's in this phone and the Mate 60 Pro is built on seven nanometer technology. Now seven nanometer processing is still like two generations behind the newest Apple chip that's three nanometer and also Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it's four nanometer. So the chip in here is still two generations behind, but the fact that Huawei was able to do it, it's surprising because the US government basically put in every single effort to prevent Huawei from to be able to do this. And to add to the mystery, Huawei has been very secretive about this phone. Like if you actually go on the website, they actually do not talk about the chip in this phone at all. So nobody knows how and where Huawei was able to make this chip. This is so dramatic and the US government, they're all like foaming at the mouth right now trying to and investigate into how Huawei made this chip. So one of the things that the US government really wants to know is whether Huawei has the ability to mass produce these chips. Because when it was first released for the Mate 60 Pro, like we don't know how many units Huawei made. Maybe they only have enough resources to make like 1,000 phones, 10,000 phones. So, you know, there's a difference between being able to make 10,000 chips and 1 million chips. So I think the US government is trying to find out. But the fact that Huawei has not put the chip in a second phone seems to imply that Huawei has the ability to mass produce the chip. Now, like I said, seven nanometer is still two generations behind what Apple Qualcomm is doing. But the fact that Huawei is able to do it, 
has the U.S. government all concerned and paranoid, and it implies that maybe in the near future, Huawei can catch up again in silicon without relying on uh, TSMC or Samsung Foundry. Let's look at the hardware. So the outside screen, exactly the same as the Mate X3, 6.4 inches. Inside screen, 7.8 inches. Like I said, this is one of the thinnest foldable phones around. It folds up to be only 11.1 millimeter. The hinge can stay in place, and this phone also has IPX8 water resistant. This is almost a Samsung quality in terms of the hinge because with um, other foldable phones like say Vivos or Xiaomi's, it can stay in place like this, but once you get down to here, then it will usually flop and close, but not the Mate X5. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why Huawei jumped from Mate X3 to Mate X5, that's because the number four in Chinese sounds like the word deaf. So a lot of Chinese companies uh, avoid the number four. It's like bad luck. It's kind of like um, Western people think of number 13. So let's look at the camera system. Identical as the Huawei Mate X3. So you have a 50 megapixel main camera, f1.8 aperture, a 12 megapixel periscope zoom lens that can do five times optical zoom with f3.4 aperture. And then you have a 13 megapixel ultra wide and a pair of front facing camera, 8 megapixel. So this five times periscope zoom lens can also do a pretty respectable 10 times zoom. So this is 10 times zoom right now. 21.4 right now. So for 21.4 on a foldable phone, it's not bad. It's a little bit soft, but. So this is the five times zoom. For a foldable phone, this is really good. You actually, this is quite sharp and you actually see a little bit of a bokeh, a little bit of depth between, you know, this little pillar here in the background. So obviously I didn't get this phone from Huawei. I got this phone from 20D Electronics. They are a importer in Hong Kong that get most phones faster than everybody. And Trinity is also able to install Google mobile services onto the May X5. The Google Play Store is here and it's running. Now, this is not the official method to use Google. I actually do not really trust it. I would not put my own Google account on it. But if you use a burner account, like a, you make up a second Google account that you don't really care about, then it's perfectly fine. And if you jump into settings, you even see the Google tab. The main camera is quite good too. You get pretty good details and a little bit of a bokeh, natural bokeh around. Okay, you know what we gotta do? Let's do a speaker test. So I'm gonna install Geekbench 6 to run a quick benchmark. Okay, so this is a Geekbench 6 score. 3441 multi-core, 1237 single core. As for speed tests, this phone's able to get basically 5G speeds without actually saying it's 5G. Now you're saying, oh, I don't even have a SIM card in here. That's because I'm tethering off my SIM card on another phone. See, it is indeed tethering right now. It's my 5G SIM card in Hong Kong. So I'm getting 463 for download speeds and upload speeds. Hovering above 70 right now. We'll do one more test. So now this time the download speed is going over 500 megabits per second. Close to 600, 598 and it uploads speeds hovering above 80. So that's another controversial aspect because the US government is trying to prevent Huawei from being able to access 5G networks. And this phone is basically getting you 5G speeds. So that about wraps up for this uh, very short hands-on with the Huawei Mate X5. Like I said, I'm not going to test this phone thoroughly because the overall hardware is exactly the same as the Mate X3. The only thing new is the chip. This chip is very controversial right now. It's causing a lot of drama. But um, yeah, it is what it is. If you want to buy this phone, Trinity Electronics is selling it. Although it is going to be marked up because this phone is completely in high demand and short supply. But Trinity Electronics can ship to most places around the world. They can ship to the U.S. Dubai, Europe, and throughout Asia. I don't know if they can send to like Africa or South America, but if you live in the US, live in Singapore, you can definitely import this phone. Although if you live in the US and you import this, CIA may knock on your door, man, who knows? So yeah, that's about it for this video. I'll have more content coming up, including a review of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Um, stay tuned to my channel. I will have video on that very soon. Thanks for watching.